What's going on everybody? Today we are doing a full review of the Tor Merchant Knife. Let me just first say that I would really hate to be a knife maker these days, especially a newer knife maker. There's a lot of critical thinking out there when it comes to what a knife should or shouldn't be. Um, even as a YouTube reviewer you you can get criticized <laughs> on your opinions everyone kind of gets criticized hellaciously out there but either way it goes here i just give my own thoughts and my own opinions and you guys hopefully w you can judge on whether it fits you or doesn't fit you according to that some of the information that i can help you with provide you with i don't void knives that i don't like so to speak, or any of that stuff like some other YouTubers. I get anything that I see that comes down the road that is a Tonto knife that I think anybody might be interested in and interest me too also because obviously I come out of pocket. But I'm not here to make super friends with anybody, any knife makers or designers or anything in particular like that. I buy everything out of my own pocket and that's the way it is and I will give my opinions as such a purchaser. So either way we'll move on. This knife here overall really is not a terrible knife by any stretch of the imagination. I prefer a knife that flips a little bit easier. This knife really eh, you know I guess a lot of people want to basically compare it to the Chris Reeve which I guess you could in some fashions they do both kind of have the same length and they both kind of have the mechanical the very mechanical opening and closing which is a slow kind of methodical roll you really can't you can you, you put some wrist into it, obviously, you can get them to flip open. You can get them both, to, even this one, to flip open. Um, the only thing that I will say that's a little bit different is really kind of the overall design. This one in particular, when you loosen the pivot, if the camera will focus here. Anyway, when you loosen the pivot here, it actually will raise up. Um, I've tried to loosen it to see if I could get the... A little bit different feeling of it and it starts to raise up which I I find weird I haven't fully disassembled it or anything like that but it does kind of raise up the pocket clip is kind of awkward um, I, I don't mind some knife hanging out of my pocket to grab onto, but I do think it's a little on the low side if you're gonna be wearing jeans it's kind of really on the low side and the ramp is just not a lot of ramp there. It can be a little tricky for a really good thick pair of jeans getting in it. And guys that don't like a knife that hangs out of the pocket, this thing hangs out quite a bit, as you can see right there. It's where your pants are going to stop. Great for grabbing it out of your pocket, but not so great if you're really trying to kind of conceal it. So there's definitely no deep carry aspects there, but let's get some little bit of a comparison here. You got your Chris Reed Sabenza 21 and a Spydeco PM2. All these knives are pretty much exactly in the same length range. Pretty close, I would say. Yet the Merchant is just a hair under 8 inches in length. Blade is 3.5 inches with about 3.25 inches of actual edge. So compared to... Pretty comparable, definitely, to the Chris Reef, but very different Tonto design when you really look at the tips. Obviously, the Chris Reef is a lot thicker all the way out to the edge. Yeah, and they're really just, I don't, would not really consider them <laughs> very comparable. The jimping is just spot on with the Chris Reef, small very workable this jimping here is pretty aggressive uh i guess it would be good if you're if you're wearing a glove sure i could you know it's fairly aggressive it doesn't really phase me i don't have sensitive fingers necessarily so it doesn't really phase me 
But if you have sensitive fingers, yes, it's probably going to irritate your fingers when you're working the knife after a while because it is pretty aggressive. Um, it's a pretty, really, when you get down to it, I mean, you can see, you know, I have, I have cut things. I guess I could have cleaned it up a little bit, but, you know, I have used it. It's not bad. Uh, for $250, it's really not bad. Lockup's pretty good. If we can get some focus here. Camera's been very inconsistent lately. Something about software. Still pretty well, pretty very well lined up. The detent is, eh, it's just, it's a little on the weaker side. I mean, it takes, you I mean, it, the blade's almost closed by the time it actually kind of sucks it in and it's not super strong there's no lash there's no lash but it's you know it's a little on the weak side but it's also very mechanical um like i said i've tried to loosen it up to see if maybe that would make a little bit of a difference eh, and like i said it's been tricky because these the pivot actually starts to come out it kind of unscrews itself, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. I guess I really need to take the whole thing apart and kind of see where we stand with it. But let's get a quick wait so we can see exactly what we're dealing with for weight. Uh, so just about four and a half ounces. Let's go ahead and compare it to the Chris Reeve. Yeah, the Chris Reeve is... A little bit on the lighter side so again now this is their first their first attempt at doing a folding knife so I'm not going to be super critical and they are also half the price of the Sabenza 31 now 21 isn't made anymore so they are at $250 they are half the price it is USA made it is all made in San Diego they say that they're making all the hardware everything is made in San Diego so that's great if it is true um it is uh, a veteran owned company so you're supporting um veterans and that's great i'd love to see that so this is their first attempt um i do hope and expect that they will get better with their their future knives that they come out with um not to be on the negative side but i'm, I'm probably quite sure that this knife is probably mostly done on cnc is what i would assume um just because really at 250 dollars you really have to be able to push out a lot of this parts full titanium i mean it takes a lot of machining to do this and to do it at 250 dollar price tag would be a heck of a deal so like i said i'm assuming that a lot of the parts are probably CNC machine, not a big deal to me. I don't really care. Um, but there's a lot of guys that are critical about that these days. So keep that in mind if you're not really a big CNCer. Um, it is a simple design, again, so that works to their advantage. But overall, I like the knife. I do enjoy it. Uh, it's not fidget friendly, and I am kind of a fidget friendly person. Uh, I do like the, you know, knives like the PM2. I love how they drop shot. You can, they're just so fidget friendly. And when you get bored, there's nothing better than to have a nice fidget friendly knife to mess around with. And that's just my opinion. Not everybody looks at a knife quite like that, but I do all day. When I get bored, I will fidget and I will flip. And, and overall, this knife hasn't been a disappointment by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's just a very different knife than I would typically prefer, which would be a little more fidget friendly. Uh, now, with that being said, obviously I have a Spenza 21 and it's not exactly super fidget friendly either. And I do find some entertainment with messing around with it too. So anyway, the, the, uh, the big picture, I, I expect good things from these guys. I, you know, the price is not really super out of the range um i definitely think there's some improvements that could be made you know the detent is a little on the weird side you know it's super aggressive up here but you know it doesn't doesn't really matter because it's not really 
it's not really drop shotty or anything anyway. So <laughs> um, it's definitely weak down here compared to up here. I mean, up here it's super aggressive when it's when it's hitting the ball there. Super aggressive. It will break in a little bit, but it's only going to break in just so much. So. So with that being said, overall, I think it's a pretty nice knife for $250 and, you know, future runs should definitely be better. So they are definitely, they are a fixed blade company. So we can expect to see better things, I'm sure, improvements. For our first knife, this is not upsetting at all. And USA made at $250, it's not bad at all. Um, getting over that ball does help if you just keep the thing open there. But yeah, so I mean, overall, it's a pretty nice knife. Um, judge as you may, if you're a fidget friendly person, this is not going to really be the knife for you. Um, if you're looking for a knife that you're only going to pull out, if you don't mind the mechanical feeling of it, then this might be the knife for you. <laughs> might not, but there you guys go. That's all for today. Just wanted to knock this review out because I want pretty much, there's a few knives that are kind of lack, lacking their full reviews that I've kind of gotten a little out of control with some newer knives and stuff. So I want to make sure I knock this out for you guys. So there you go. That's the Tor Merchant Tonto version. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.